Hello and welcome everyone back to Not Fighting. I, I'm welcoming everybody back because I'm assuming you're a regular listener. If you're listening for the very first time, welcome for the first time to Not Fighting. We're really good at this. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the, the thing is, is like we always say that we have like the same brain that we um, like sort of read each other's minds or whatever. Yes. And um, yeah, like I think that, you know, it's always more difficult whenever you've got a microphone, I feel like. It's not about a microphone. I think that sometimes you're just very strange and there's random. No, got it. Yeah. There's <laughs> there's no way I can get on that like level, that wave of thinking. Like, yeah. We do this thing at the house sometimes where like uh, we'll be weird to each other, just act weird and then be like, stop being weird. But you always have to stop it early because you're like. Yeah, because you're too weird. It can't handle the weird. I'll win the weird battle. Like he's gonna win. He's so gonna weird. win the weird and the creepy. He's so good at being <sighs> creepy. I'm so good at it. Yeah, that is definitely like stop. It creeps me out. <laughs> you can't do that with a mullet. Stop. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> it just, now it just looks like I need government assistance. <laughs> That's not like that was no. It's, it's, it's more like niche to where I'm from, but. Yeah. Anyways, no. <laughs> shout out to everybody from where I'm from. Uh, there are a lot of those people are dead. Cajun. That's what you meant. <laughs> shout out to Tom Segura. <laughs> I'm sure he's a listener. Um, <laughs> no, but uh, you know, we were kind of talking to him uh, before we got on. Uh, we happened to record this just uh, shortly after the uh, Khabib, um, Habib, Hab- Habib, uh, versus Justin Gaethje fight. And uh, we're just talking about like uh, where does you know uh, Nurk Nurkadaminov where does be where does he sit in the pound for pound rankings and kind of talking about this? But then or we, like the the goat yeah, discussion. It's like pound for pound, and then also like goat. And but one of the things I thought was weird before we even got into it is we were like, isn't it weird that like everybody in jujitsu seems to be like congratulating him on retirement and stuff? Yeah, and just on that win yesterday, and it's. Funny because I think I think yesterday, like watching him when you know he's obviously a very like popular fighter, and there's a lot like to be celebrated with him. But I think yesterday's thing, just seeing him like be emotional after winning, and you know after the passing of his father, and like then retiring off of that, I think you know that makes you feel some type of way, and it kind of like makes you respect and appreciate you know, the career, the body of work that he's put forth and like, you know, like what he's done. I feel like you can't, I always like, I like to see people um, retire when they're still killing it. Yeah. You know, that makes me, yeah, retire on top. Like don't, because that was what one of the things that we were talking about was like with like these pound for pound, pound, no, the goat, like talking about that discussion. Like there's a lot of people who you could have made claims to that. But then they they kept fighting too long, yeah. And like it's it like, tarnishes no, the reputation. It tarnishes it, and so now you don't. They don't seem like the goat. But um, back to the, like the the my whole news feed yesterday on like all social media was like, congrats, Habib. Like all like this, you know, what a beautiful triangle. It's a great display of jujitsu. What yeah. a beautiful career, and all these things. And it's so funny that everybody just loves to attach themselves to like greatness, and like yeah. you know. Probably never posted about his his a single fight of his or being excited about him at all. But then, like, he wins, like, with really beautiful jiu-jitsu, like, on a... Submission grappling. Yeah, submission grappling, yes. I don't yes, yes. I, and to your point, like, I think one of the reasons why, like, we're, we're discussing this is because it's like, I don't think Habib is going to say that what he does is jiu-jitsu or that he's ever trained jiu-jitsu. You know what I'm I saying? I have no clue about his jiu-jitsu, and he, I feel like he has. I mean, like I've seen him, I've seen him grapple with jujitsu guys and stuff before. Yeah. But like, I don't know that he thinks of what he's doing when he's grappling. Is it's like, oh, I'm doing jujitsu moves. You know does what I'm saying? Does he have like a belt in like ranking in jujitsu? Like, does he ever like? I don't know. These I don't are know. things I don't know. Well, to me, we could find out. Oh, man, yeah, we could. We got phones. Like, should right? I? Should I? I'll Google it. You keep talking. So <laughs> yeah, let's find out because. Uh, you know, the way that it is with people that are in um, like catch wrestling or something, it's like Josh Barnett is not going to say like, oh, the, like he doesn't give the credit to jujitsu 
and he's not like really overly worried about like jujitsu's ranking system or whatever because he thinks that the grappling that he does is not jujitsu. And I have a feeling just because of uh, Habib, his dad, like the 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 dynasty and the program that they have in in Dagestan in terms of wrestling. My guess is they're not gonna like give credit to the submissions. So uh, for jujitsu. Okay, so he is a um, judo black belt. And a two-time combat sambo world champion, but in this photo he was training. He I was training with somebody. He had a white belt on and a gi. Yeah. So yeah. My guess is yeah. out of respect, he probably puts on. He's like, a submission a white belt. grappler. Like he is. Yeah. Like yeah, he can do it all. I mean, and, Fedor was not a like was a white belt in quote unquote jujitsu just because he didn't do it. Yeah. But he was a same thing. He was sambo world champion. Like yeah, very like good submission fighter. I will say that I was like kind of like low-key disappointed in Gaethje's like jujitsu yeah grappling skills like I know he's a fantastic wrestler and that's something but like it doesn't seem like he's really trained like in the submission like yeah I mean that was game, the knock on him is you that, know that basically on the ground he was not a very strong submission grappler that's probably why he doesn't wrestle I mean you think about it, it's like when has that ever been tested by anyone yeah you no. know it, we talked about his wrestling pedigree a little bit, like, you know, before getting ready for the fight. But, um, you know, Habib just put that crazy pace on him. And that's, to me, that's why he is in that discussion for being, um, you know, maybe, th- def- I-, I think he's definitely like one or two pound for pound best right now. But then like even in GOAT conversation, if your criteria is like who is just straight up the best pound for pound fighter, like yeah, technique in their day, not not in their day, but just like technically whatever. Like he might be that guy because if you watch the way that he pressured people in his last three fights, Poirier, um, who did he fight before Poirier? McGregor, yeah, and um, and Justin, three very different fighters, dangerous in different ways, and mm-hmm. every single one of them, he just like hunted them down and just yeah, dominated them, finished yeah. them. I mean, he's pretty amazing. I respect him, his talent as a fighter. I don't agree with all of his beliefs about women fighting. And just how women should live their lives in general. But, you know. And to me. This is a different part of the world. And and you know what? It's fair. Like whatever, you know, whatever your views or opinions are, whatever, as long as they're just not discriminatory, um, you know, be what they be. But one of the things that I dislike uh, a lot of times, and I see it in all sports and all culture, but it's like you have somebody like Habib where you do have this feel good story about him and his dad and, um and just how dominant he is and whatever. And you celebrate all of that. But also at the same time, I don't like when people not just avoid like certain aspects of, of somebody that may not be like virtuous, mm-hmm. but you you kind of like brush them under the rug or like shoo them away, mm-hmm. you know? Like he has made, you know, some comments about like just females in general fighting that I don't know that most of the population is going to support, you know? Yeah. Well, the U.S. population. It's probably, you know? yeah, oh yeah, great point. Like, and I think that that's where it stems from. And I mm-hmm. think that that gets minimized a lot in sports. Yeah. But I think that's that's one thing that you have to be able to do is separate the fighter from the person in a lot of, a lot of regards because it's like if you, and it's a shame because it's like you can't, if you find, it's like, you know, you don't want to meet your heroes, like that kind of a, that thing yeah. or whatever, because it's like, you'll be disappointed. But at the same time, like, um, yeah, I think you definitely need to like separate those two things. Like, and I can like respect somebody as an athlete in like what they've done because it's like the work ethic, like the things that he has done accomplished, like to be 29 and out, like as a professional, that's insane, like record. And, um, just to have the dedication and like the and there's something about his character as like a you know if he says something he's gonna honor his word his promises like those kinds of things yeah, like, that's what we said when he was retiring we were yeah like, he said i gave my word to my mom and i was like oh no he's that guy he's for sure <laughs> he's for sure done you know like those kinds of things like um like you can respect somebody in that aspect but i don't have to like love everything about them and you have to be able to kind of like separate those two things yeah. Which for me, I don't always do because like that's how I like judge my my favorites and my fighters. I'm like, oh, I like him because of this. But I mean, I can I guess I could do it with like the Diaz brothers because like I love their attitude and like that kind of thing. But I mean, I probably would think there's a lot of douchey things about them if I like were 
friends with them. <laughs> but that's, but I mean, that's sort of the, but the I way love with their your friends too, fighter, right? Yeah. It's like I have a lot of friends where, you know, I mean, just peop- through people at jujitsu, it's like a lot of people with a lot of unique problems and issues yeah. and personality quirks and, you know, I don't know. It's, you know me, I don't think ever, anything in particular is all black and white. It's no. hard to divide the world up that way. But uh, yeah, I just dislike that sometimes we we ignore those things, I feel like. In the same way mm-hmm. that I feel like the jiu-jitsu uh, community in a lot of respects, like the shout outs, like, oh, congrats, Khabib, you know, like, yeah. you know, one of the greatest grapplers of all time or whatever, as if you're like claiming him is he's like one of jujitsu's own or whatever. Yeah. It's like, he yeah. wouldn't think that, you know? Yeah, that's, I think that's Where what bothers me about Cibuto it. Where were you when Henry Cejudo retired, you know? He's a grappler, Olympic gold medalist, grap, quote unquote grappling. And Henry's wrestling, like in those credentials are, and how they tie to jiu-jitsu don't tie together any more than like Khabib's like credentials and whatever. Yeah, that's very true. At. It's just it's just funny to me. And I think that was the thing is it's like it's kind of like this like I think because jiu-jitsu it's not, it's not a professional sport like in any way. So it's like there's certain things it's like people in the community do to try and like just legitimize um, jiu-jitsu as a sport. Yeah. Instead of just a martial art or a self defense like thing, you know, and or just to make themselves feel like they're a part of something bigger than they are. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that one hundred percent because I think, um, yeah, I, I agree with you in that I think people in jiu jitsu, I, I think they seek that legitimacy that comes with other sports, and I also think it's a great sport to hide and pretend in, you know, because yes. it is a hobbyist sport and. Because of the, the the means of that, if you are like really serious about it and you show up, you can be the best of whatever it is that's around you. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's not it's not set up in the same respect where it's like you go try out for an American football team in high school or something like that. You know, you're you're being compared and everybody's competing for different position spots and spots on a team or whatever. It's like when you choose to be the only one participating, it's really easy. Yeah. And then you want that you want that shine, you know, you want like, hey, check it out. I'm the starting quarterback or whatever. It's like, yeah, but it was volunteer. <laughs> you know, it's a volunteer <laughs> position. Exactly. But oh god, don't even get me started on on, on We've that. gone into we've, that. We've gone down that rabbit hole before a little bit and it's things that bother me about the the posers. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm sure that the, that's it's that way like in every sport though. You know, you have like I wonder how like and I don't mean to take away from anybody. Okay. As anybody that gives a caveat like that mm-hmm. before they, she's about to take away from some people. But I wonder how like the people, like let's say professional like NBA players, like I want to know their true thoughts on guys who go to play basketball in Europe. And I'm sure that's been Oh, <laughs> she's starting on European basketball players. But, you know. It's just like, yeah, you couldn't make it in the best. And now you're like playing professional basketball. It's not. It's kind of the same thing with jujitsu, though, where it's like yeah. pretending to be a professional. There's not really like a lot. Like, a, it, but it's like, I don't know. It's like you're pay- playing <laughs> European basketball. And I'm kind of the- hating on myself a little bit, like, because like I am like a professional. <laughs> but like, uh, yeah, it's like if you're playing European basketball and there still was no NBA and they didn't pay the Europeans. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't pay the Europeans. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the things about jiu-jitsu is it's not a professional sport. It, it really is like it's a martial art. We talked about this before. It's like a martial art, a hobby, a sport. Um, and I think that there's there's the sport in general. It's just like. I don't know how it's going to get to be that because I think I see like there's so many things like that are heading that way and people making strides to like make it more professional and things. But like until there's some sort of like governing body like or something like that, not not saying like you need that, but like there's too many people that have too much clout or like influence that are holding the sport back. The thing is, is because like, of their own ego if, if or their are, own like weird things. The thing is, is like if jujitsu grows in popularity, like as a is something that people want to watch as a sport, like not and not just watch, but like care about, participate in, whatever. 
it'll it'll get there it'll get to whatever mm-hmm. version of professional people think that it is the problem yeah. is is right now at scale there is money in jiu-jitsu which we should talk about that sometime but yeah. it's 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 very concentrated and because it is a smaller sport controlled by multiple people it just spread thinly across and yeah. then concentrated in a couple of areas yeah and yeah I but, don't even know where I was going with that. I have things to say. I have so many things to say, but like, I don't know. We're going to get some you evidence. Know. We're going to pull some charts. We'll do an episode with charts. But the, the thing is, is like, we were talking about this before, but like most people practicing jiu-jitsu, you know, like you just want to show up and you want to get better and you're just like working on it as an art. And something we talked about last weekend, we were walking around with our good friend Nick, his black belt, um, and he, we were just talking about like whenever you get done rolling with somebody and they're like, what was I doing wrong? Yeah. Yeah. It's always, that's one of those things I'm like, man, unless they're just, just not good or they just are just so brand new that you have a million things that you could do. It's usually, it's usually not like the, the white belts, the, or like even blue belts that ask you that Mm -hmm. it's like purple belts. Yeah. Purple belts and brown belts. Yeah. That ask you like that kind of question. And it's just like, sometimes I'm like, man, you're making all the right decisions but i'm just ahead of you yeah and, that's <laughs> and i know i know the next step or like i'm i'm like already ahead and i know what you're gonna do and that's why it almost seems easier for me sometimes than like training with somebody who is like a white belt a white or- belt and like they you they're unpredictable you know so yeah and i think <laughs> that the thing about like purple belts and brown belts too is like oftentimes we were talking about it with nick it's like they're sometimes the very easiest to kind of like lay down six, seven submissions in a five minute round or something like that because they're making all the right choices. It's just the right choices are just very uh, predictable. And then you can, if you're a black belt, you've been doing it longer, you're more talented. It's like, it allows you- You just understand the game that they're playing. It allows you to be just extremely sharp because you can, you really can be like one step ahead. You can set them up perfectly. And just, and sometimes it's a matter of timing, like my timing and like, I'm like being a step ahead helps with that timing. Like I know what you're doing, where you're going before you even go there. And like, that's, that's kind of what's hard about telling people those like- this is what you're doing wrong. It's like, well, I already knew where you're going. Yeah. And I think that that's the thing that um, is, is why like that's like such a- You need to know that I know where you're going. And then if you know what I know, then you can do better. Yeah. You and know? the thing right? is, is, like, you know, it's like we were talking about with him is like, it's a flawed question because, you know, the classic answer, which is not helpful is like, well, what part specifically? Like, let's go back to one spot. And I can tell yeah. you exactly what you did there. Yes. But like. Yeah. Like, what am I doing wrong in general? It's like, in general, you need to get better at jujitsu or the answer is nothing because it's not like yeah. the, you can't go back in time to that role mm-hmm. and like do one thing less aggressive, more aggressive, you know? Yeah. Like, sometimes it's a personality thing, but I don't know. The thing is, is like. The answer is either a thousand very specific things or generally nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's so true. So it's like, that's a very hard question to answer, especially. And, and honestly, for me, it's really hard to answer because half the time, like, I'm not thinking, I don't remember what ha- happened in the, in the, the role at all. I'm like, they're like, oh yeah, I remember when you did this. I'm like, I did. I don't remember that. <laughs> like, I don't even remember. I submitted you like that. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> What's funny is sometimes people, will, I'll be like, I don't remember. And then they'll tell me, I'm like, oh, that's funny that that's what you think happened. I'll show you. Yeah. I'll show you yeah. what we did. Well, what actually happened. Yeah. Yes. They're like, oh, you like rolled over. We were, you were in side control. And I'm like, no, no, no. You were on your side. I forced you to turn over and then I rolled, but I hooked your leg. And then they're like, yeah. oh, but it's like just weird how they perceive it. And that's, that's ultimately like, that's what's wrong. Like, that's what you can do different. It's like, you need to understand like the positions, how they're getting exploited. And that is not one thing. Mm-hmm. It's like, it's each of the things. Mm-hmm. If somebody, you know, takes you down, passes your guard, mounts you, and then submits you, that's like essentially six fundamental things that yeah. you, you did incorrectly. Yeah. And usually like um, when you're training and you make a mistake, that's like that was a, a a real mistake it like you know instantly oh 
I had the wrong grip or I went the wrong direction or I did, you know, this wrong. Can't let them get there. You can't let that happen. Yeah. Like you almost know immediately. And I, I mean, because I usually do when things go like that terribly wrong. I'm like, (laughs) in a training, you're like, oh, shoot, I made a bad choice. Yeah. You know? Yep. Um, when me and Majid were uh, training yesterday, uh, we were talking about you were watching this role and you were like, oh, yeah, there's that one part you started to get a little bit behind. And I remember being in that behind spot and like, you know, just trying to re- make sure that I'm like recovering my guard and stuff like that. But the thought process there is at every stage, like I, I knew that I'd like let him get to a position or yeah. got, got something that I shouldn't have. And then every step after that was making sure I don't like, like give, get make another worse. mistake yeah. and I need to get to a point to where he lets me recover and get back even. And so it's yes. like you got to keep making all the right choices there. And like you said, you'll know like if yeah. you mess up a spot and it gets further, then it's yeah. like, okay, now you've, you know, if uh, your health bar was at 100, it was at 70 and now it's at 40. You what know? do you mean by health bar? I'm video gamifying it. I know. I just wanted to clarify. <laughs> our, our, it's like Street Fighter. Our, yes. Our <laughs> That's listeners exactly. will know. We're a very Street Fighter heavy demo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I, I do think it's weird because um, I, I do still get that question a lot. Mm-hmm. And um, there's not really general things in jiu-jitsu that are overly helpful, in, in my opinion, in terms of advice. You know what I mean? I think there's a handful of things that are are overly helpful. Like, um, I mean, if you tell somebody, hey, you know what your problem but is? But like when you're starting out, the generalizations are helpful. As you get more and more advanced, I don't think generalizations yeah, are true. as helpful. Yeah, great point. Because like when you're white belt, you think about being in closed guard. I remember I've always telling me, don't put your hands on the mat, mm-hmm. right? Generally, don't do that. Yes. Well, and it's another thing that you say when you know the rules, you can break the rules. And it's like, yeah. that's why generalizations are helpful when you're just starting out. Yeah. The rules. I guess yes. that's true. Yeah. Yeah. That is like one of the uh, probably best lessons I ever got in jiu-jitsu uh, from a gentleman by the name of Brian Mitchell. Shout out Big Brian. Oh, I miss him. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, but I remember a long time ago saying something to him and then he was like, well, you know, when you know the rules, you can break the rules. And I was like, that's right. Like, because I feel like I can get away with whatever it was I was doing. I actually think it was in stand up. But mm. um, I remember him saying that and being like, yeah, he's right. This works really good for me. And it works really good because the rule itself creates the opportunity. If yeah. You can exploit it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's that. I mean, that, that happens a lot. And, you know, I remember <laughs> our professor always saying, uh, if you have to ask the question, he's like, I need to see the picture. <laughs> and by picture, he mean picture. <laughs> he meant <laughs> but, <laughs> and it's like this like exact like specific position I need to know exactly what was happening the exact picture <laughs> <laughs> so that you can answer the question because you're talking about like Nolan Ryan <laughs> I was trying to think of a baseball picture people would be familiar with anyways keep going I feel like it's a old reference <laughs> We don't like baseball. I was going to say Randy Johnson, but I was like, huh? I don't know if you know who Randy Johnson is. I don't is. know who that is. Killed a bird with a pitch. Oh. Statistically, they say it should happen once a year, but it like almost never happens. I never heard of that happening. Statistically, it should happen once a year. <laughs> Anyways. Oh, my God. I'm a numbers I don't even guy. Know what we're talking about. <laughs> numbers. Yeah. Numbers. No, but the exact picture, like you were saying. Yeah, I think that that's like in in uh, in jujitsu, like that's like kind of true. You know, you need to know, like, because there's a lot of different reactions. It's kind of like going back to like when when you're like a higher level and you're making all the right choices, but the person's just a step ahead of you and knows just a little bit more. Like, then you have to know. Like, it's not that you made the wrong choice. It's like you just have to know like the next layer of that position that you were working or um i but like when you're brand new it's like you're gonna make all the wrong choices all the time and so yep. like it depends on like what well what went wrong there it's like well where were you at like what did you do like 
all these kinds of things are very helpful because I can give you a right answer and I can give you an answer like for a generalization. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's realistically it. And, and like, I don't try to be dismissive when I answer it, but a lot of times I, no. I, I do say to people like, you just need to get better. Yeah. And sometimes I don't even want to answer the question because guess what? I'm tired and I just want to get another, or I just want to get another training partner and not waste my time with this question right now. <laughs> I mean, I've told people before, like, I'm just awesome. Like, yeah. 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 Like, because it's like, I have said, like, I'm just better than you. Yeah. And it's true <laughs> because it's like, I'm just a lot better than you. And it sounds so egotistical, but sometimes it is like, it's just true. Cause you're not telling that to like a black belt. Yeah. You're telling that to somebody that's lower ranked. Whenever than you, I train with, like, I'm uh, just better than you at this position. When I train with Felipe, Felipe Andrew, just yes. for context, I'm not, yeah. not name dropping, but I mean, I am training with him all the time. <laughs> <laughs> no big deal. But, uh, <laughs> It's like, I don't ask him when we're done training, like, hey, man, what am I doing wrong? It's like, Philippe is good. He's better than me. And you he's know? a lot bigger than you. Yeah. The, I mean, a lot of things. So I'm not ever just like, man, uh, what am I just doing wrong with Philippe? You know? <laughs> and it's like, no, he's a, he's really good. It's like, yeah. it's basically everything that I don't do exactly right is an opportunity for him to do yes. awesome against me. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. A hundred percent. And that's how it is yeah. for... I mean, there's just layers of that. It goes deeper and deeper. Yeah. And I think, too, like, if you're fighting, let's say, if you're training with, like, a purple or brown belt, like, somebody that's, like, you know, below your belt ranking, you're not you're not as likely to let them work as, yes. as you would maybe a blue belt or a white belt, where it's, like, you're going to, like, give them opportunities to succeed and then take advantage of their failures. <laughs> <laughs> Like a good parent. Yes. It's a, it's an opportunity to learn. Like you're going to let your toddler, like you're going to tell them, don't touch the stove. It's hot. And then one day. And, they're and then, gonna, you know, they do it. And they then you're do just it. Like, and you're that like, little yeah, mother, I told you. They just burn their hand. Yeah. They burn their hand because, you know, you told them. And then, yeah, I don't no, know you if gotta, that actually makes sense. You, it's like, don't. Like everybody that's always trying to like get us to have kids, and now they're like, "Well, now we're second thing in it." It's like they're gonna have disfigured kids. They just said they didn't let their kid burn their hand. I mean, I told I'm not gonna let them. I'm gonna tell them. They go to put their hand on the stove, them. and I'm just over here like, "Do it." <laughs> like I mean, one day, like I saw my dog licking a, an outlet, and I was like, "No, don't do that. Don't do that." And I tried to get him to stop, but he keeps licking it. Like, well, if he does it, he'll get shocked, and then he'll figure it out. He didn't get shocked. I never let him. He he learned. He listened. <laughs> uh, he's he's actually really smart. Yes. But I mean, yeah, a light socket thing, or not light socket, electrical socket, socket. Yeah, socket. An outlet, <laughs> if you will. <laughs> electrical socket. <laughs> uh, I feel like we're silly today. Like kind of slap happy. I don't know. It's yeah. The it's, weekend. Yeah. It's the weekend, um, Sunday for us. If you're listening to this and you're like, I'm bummed. I'm listening to this on like a Wednesday. I wanted this to be live. It's whatever day it is you think it is for us. I don't even know what that means. I just know that people sometimes it's like you don't want to listen to something pre-recorded because you're like, I want to feel like this is happening right now. I mean, yeah. We could do lives if you would like. We're not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> If you would like that, if you, the listener uh, at home, would like us to do lives, I mean, we can accommodate, uh, I suppose, uh, send your social security number and a credit card number to 555. <laughs> no. But, I mean, think about how many security, like social security numbers we could get here, babe. We could get quite the thing going. I mean, we need to sidebar this conversation if we're going to take advantage of the listeners. But just like, let's think about taking advantage of the listeners. <laughs> We're not going to do that. I feel like I have to say we're not going to do that because... We're not. We would never. I mean, we would never. Anyways. Um, yeah, I think that kind of wraps up the show today. Um, we kind of touched on a number of different things, but uh, I think just generally, if uh, you get done rolling with somebody and you're like, what am I doing wrong? The answer is you're not Habib. Yeah, that's a great answer. <laughs> We so, didn't talk about the goats, though. Did you want to talk about that or no? Uh, sure. I mean, I... Like, I don't know. I, I do think that, like, 
I mean, it depends on your criteria. That's the thing, you know? I know. Like, like I'm I told talking you- about goats of MMA. That's the one thing I did want to say because it's like we were talking about this list and like for Habib, like, you know, he has an unblemished record and he's pretty much dominated everyone that he fought, like in yeah. some sense, right? So it's like- Especially here recently. Man, that guy's pretty good. Man. Man. But like, then you talk about other people. And I think what's hard too is that you have to go back to a time where the level was different. It's just a different you know? thing. It was but, very different. But also they couldn't learn the same. Like Adesanya said before, it's like not fair to compare him and Anderson Silva because he's like, I'm building on top of what Anderson Silva was already doing. Yes. You know? But Anderson Silva is a great example of somebody who – could have been at one point was probably considered the goat because he looked unbeatable and then all of a sudden like he's fighting past his prime and like he looks like the most beatable yeah you know and and now you look back against the competition he fought and you start second guessing them because you have this gradient now where you're like well where when did he stop being the goat because when he lost to chris weidman twice like was he the goat then you know yeah because, like, I don't know that you can say if if he was, then you can't really give, like, him the nod over Habib or yeah. even St. Pierre. Yeah. Who- I mean, St. Pierre, like, I mean, to me, he's been, like, one of my all-time favorites. So I'm, like, very biased about that. Um, but, like, he has that knockout. He got knocked out by Matt Serra. Yeah, so it's the like, blemish on Saint- that blemish like puts him like, but for me, I'm like I can overlook that because I think it was a fluke. <laughs> yeah, and I think that with um, you know, with Saint Pierre, that's the that's the knock is that he has two losses, both of them were sort of flukes that he avenged in very dominant fashion. Yes, but like you ask when asked to rise to the occasion or whatever, it's like he's got some falters there, and to me, that's what makes somebody like even uh, Adesanya and. Habib so special is it's like almost the more that they were tested, the more they showed up and were dominant. Yeah, you know? but I don't think you can you can put Adesanya in the 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 talk right now because he's so new in his career. Like he's like he like not new, but like it's kind just of a like short career. It's short. It's but very short. His record is almost like I think him and Randy Couture might have the same number of fights. But I'm just saying, like he just kind of like he's like this rising star still so i don't think that he's at you talk about the goats when they're like at the end of their career or after their career is over you know Mm -hmm. and i don't think you can say that for somebody that's like right in the prime of their career true but i mean i think khabib's in the although everybody tries to have been saying that about lebron for yeah well i think i mean that's the sad part about him i think he's in his prime right now and that's the thing is like if you look at his last three fights, like McGregor was definitely the toughest fight he's ever had. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's any question. And he was very dominant, submitted him. And you're like, oh, there's some bad blood. Maybe that's it. Poirier, not e- I mean, good everywhere. Like that's not going to be easy fight. Mm-hmm. Just dominant against Poirier. And then Gaethje is like, ooh, Gaethje is like he's got this like weird mix of talents. that's just a bad matchup and just blows through him. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I don't think if we ever saw him fight Tony Ferguson, it's going to be any. No, I, I mean, I think like I don't even care now. to fight that, see that fight any, ever. No, like, I mean, I, there's two fights that I'd like to see Habib have, and that is Saint Pierre and Adesanya. Yeah, those would be interesting, but I honestly don't want to see him fight Saint Pierre because I don't think like Saint Pierre hasn't been fighting like, and he's like so past his prime, like the age, like, and just the fact that he's been out of the game for so long. It's not that I doubt his ability it's that like it doesn't even make sense yeah no i'm point. with you because it's like um you know we're saying we're just talking about anderson past the prime like to me it's one of those things if habib should win and if he doesn't it i mean saint pierre hands down the goat you know but i also think it's not really necessarily fair for saint pierre because it's like he's he's not active right he's not yes. an active fighter he is way older he's definitely not in his like fighting prime and it's not like he's gonna take another fight to like shake off the ring rust mm, no. he's, that would be silly you know yeah the only thing you would do is just come out of retirement to fight habib and that doesn't make sense to me i mean every that's the thing, i would love like, to see it 
but it doesn't make sense. When you're talking about like the greatest, like I said, you just have to define it. Otherwise, it just gets subjective because you can find a reason for why somebody has like uh, a knock against like, like you have a criticism of their career somehow. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yes. Like with Habib, it's, he's ending it now. He's very, very dominant, you know, but like early on, like he has not really had a very long title reign. You know what I mean? And he's Does basically- he have 13 title defenses? Or some- 13 fights in the UFC or 11 fights in the UFC. Oh. He won the title against McGregor and then okay. defended yeah, yeah, against yeah, yeah. Poirier. Okay, yeah, yeah. But it's just, you know, like with Adesanya, it's like you look at his weight class and he's taken out everybody already. You know, it's like they were hoping yeah. Cannoneer wins so that it's like he's somebody that that's in the sense? top five no. that he could fight, you know. But now it's like, well, he's beat everybody. So they're already talking about him fighting John Jones. And that's why to me, he's like almost in this conversation already. Because if you look at Habib, it's like, I can think of like five fights, you know? Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean those guys are going to win, but it's like those guys have a right to that fight, you know? Yeah, I would agree. Adesanya, but it's like, who who has a right to fight him right now at middleweight? Don't know. Nobody. Yeah. Maybe Darren Till. And this is why the GOAT thing will always be a discussion and everybody's going to have different opinions about it because there are so many variables that you can discuss. Like what we need, specific criteria. Somebody send me what the criteria is for determining the goat it's it's just like what am i doing wrong it's like a thousand specific things it's like what are we talking about specifically are you talking about the greatest grappler you talking about like the greatest career greatest comeback Because a lot of people didn't like a lot of people try and put like uh demetrius uh johnson in the goat like category but it's so hard because he's in he's so tiny. <laughs> and I've, I know he's the discussion where it's like, oh, was he just so good that no one else like ever appeared to be great? And my answer to that is no. No, I just think, yeah, because it's like I think there's just not there's not a lot of like depth. Yeah, in that because division. you do look at it and you're like, okay, in that weight class, who else do we know was just a stud dominant? Dominic Cruz for a second when Demetrius came up and Dominic won that fight. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Henry Cejudo where they're one and one, you know? Yeah. And it's like, "Mm, when against top competition, how is he? Mm, One and two. Yeah. Not not a goat. Not a goat. That's what gives John Jones his edge, you know? It's like he beat so many good guys. But he's a cheater and has cheated almost every fight. Yeah. So. Or I assume he's cheated on every fight and just hasn't been caught on every fight, but caught on most of them. Mm. So he's not anything to me. <laughs> not a John Jones fan is Jenna Bishop. I'm not. I think he's such a phony person. Sorry. I do. Sorry, not sorry. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and we're sorry, not sorry about offering everyone that goes to foodiesports.com uh, 20% off if you enter the promo code Bishop at checkout. And so we both are wearing our Fuji Sports sweatshirts today, crew nice. This one's new. I like it. <laughs> um, but yeah, been sponsored by Fuji Sports for six, seven years maybe. And uh, yeah, it, there's a reason why. We love Fuji. We think they make the best products on the market. And uh, yeah, we hope that you'll go and check them out. And no benefit to us other than you get 20% off for listening and for knowing who we are. So promo code Bishop, 20% off. 20% is a decent amount. Talking about geese and stuff. It's a good deal. Yeah, it's a good deal. And then, Do it. And then um, Keon. Keon Sports Supplements. Uh, I know you use them yes. for their uh, central amino acids. Uh, I'm not a doctor, um, but I do know that, um, yeah, over the years, I've taken a lot of different supplements, and I definitely think that there are many that work in – but most that don't. And, yes. Uh, essential and it's hard, to, I mean, it's hard to trust like the brand, like what the products, like what's actually, if there's what's in, what they say is in it, is in it. And like the quality of product. And for me, it was like something I was looking for a product that didn't have like a whole bunch of artificial additives, like in a drink, like a supplement, sh- like a EAA, like tr- uh shake or drink, whatever you want to call that. And uh cans like was like, has been my favorite, hands down. So yeah, so I'm a firm believer. Yeah, so you won't hear us talk about too many different things on the podcast that we support, but Fuji Sports, their family, basically been using only Fuji stuff 
for the last decade. And um, yeah, Keon is a sports supplement we've been using for a long time prior to ever um, working with them as an affiliate. And because we're an affiliate, you can actually go to Keon uh, now and use the promo code Bishop BJJ. And um, yeah, check out all their their cool stuff. And I think that's it for today. Yeah. Thanks for listening and or watching. Leave us a review if uh, you can. Like and subscribe. Yeah. Both those things on whatever platform you are on. MySpace. That, oh, I just can't with you sometimes. I'm trying to think of the other ones that were out there around that time. There used to be something like .TV. It's like Leroy.TV. I don't know. I don't <laughs> Geo cities. Okay, you're done now. You're done. He's done. We're done. Thank you so much um, for listening. And um, we'll catch you next time on another episode of <laughs> Not Fighting. <laughs>